Okay, in this next part we're going to deal with how the targets reveal themselves to the player. So what's going to happen eventually is the player walks into a room in this target range, the panel targets pop up, the round targets pop down from behind something, and the spinning targets will just already be there. Then when the player shoots all the targets, a door will open and they move on, but that will be the next video. In this one we're just concerned with how do we get these targets to reveal themselves. To do that we're going to need some little walls for them to pop up from behind, so I'm going to delete all these instances that we've got in there at the moment and then just build like a little target range quite quickly because I don't want to spend too much time on laying walls out and stuff. Let's put in some target panels first. Just rotate that to face the front. Put a few more copies like that maybe. Then we'll have some spinning targets kind of next to them. Maybe set back a little bit. They can rotate that a bit. Put one on this side. You can spend as much time with this as you want, but that's all I want to put on for those ones. And then we'll have these behind a little wall. Now to do that, again you can use proper meshes if you want. I'm just going to get the cube from the you know basic shapes panel. Drag that in. Scale it this way. Just make sure that's right. Bring that up a bit. Scale it to be taller. And then just make sure that when revealed those panel targets are kind of popping up from behind the wall. Now for the round targets, let's drag one of those in. So round target there, move that up. Then what I want to do here is rotate this like that so the target is kind of angled backwards and the pivot point is at the front. Rotate it down like that, because that, that's the motion it's going to have to reveal to the player. And we'll do a similar thing here, we'll build a little wall for them. So move that up a bit higher. They can be slightly further back than the other targets. Select the wall. And to make this look a little bit different, I'm going to put a different material on it. It doesn't matter what material it is. Um, here we've got the first person projectile material. I'm going to go with that, just because it's, it's this yellow colour, it's there. I don't need to hunt around for it. Um, then we alt drag that wall to be higher and position this so that when this target rotates down from so hidden to revealed it kind of pops out like that. Again you can spend as long as you want getting that exactly how you like it. Let's just put a few more of these in. There we go. So from the place point of view it's going to look like this except those ones and those ones will start off hidden and then as the player walks forward they'll pop up or pop out and these ones will be there already. Okay so when we say the target is revealed what exactly do we mean? Well if you look at it, in the case of these targets all they're doing is changing their X rotation. See the X rotation here on this target is 90 and when it's hidden all that's changed is its X rotation is 0. Right, so it goes from 0 to 90. Starts off at 0, swings down to 90. And then these ones, again, they start off with an X rotation of minus 90, and it swings up to plus 90. And that will be the same no matter how they're rotated. Like, say, if it's facing that way, it will still be an X rotation. I mean, it doesn't look like it is, but trust me, it'll work. We'll, in the next room that we do, we'll put some of them facing at odd angles, and you'll see what I mean. All that happens for this to be revealed is its X rotation goes from minus 90 to 0. Okay, great. So why don't we just have in the base blueprint a variable to store what the the start X rotation of each target could be. The thing is, we don't want to build the level with them in their hidden positions because as we're making the level, we want to see how it's going to look to the player like this. But then when the game starts, we want them to be hidden. Or at least that's the way that it makes sense to me to do it. So if we go to the base blueprint, Add another variable to this called start x rotation, and that is going to be a float variable. And then what we're going to do is use event begin play. Event begin play is something that we inherit from actor. Remember th this blueprint target base inherits from actor, and we're going to say when the game starts, what begin play does. Begin play runs when the game starts, or whenever any instance of this blueprint is created in the world. We want to take our actor and set its X rotation to be whatever we're storing this variable here. Now we've already done something similar to this, haven't we? If you look in the target panel, 
we have this setup next to the timeline where we say take our actor, set its x rotation to be something, but keep the y and z the same, and we can use the same thing. So we can we can select this set actor rotation, hold control and also select this get actor rotation, go control C to copy them, and then paste them in the target base next to this event begin play, and just wipe it up so that it is our start x rotation variable which x becomes and y and z stays wherever they were. But start x rotation might need different values depending on what the blueprint is. But that's fine, we can do that. Hit compile, go to round target. If you select at the top of the components list the blueprint itself, the thing is if you've got one of these components selected you can see the properties for that component over here in the details panel. If you select the Thing at the top, the name of the blueprint itself, you can see properties to do with that blueprint. And here we have that start x rotation because we've added it to the base blueprint that then ripples through to all of the inheriting blueprints. It's pretty useful. In the case of our round targets, you remember their start x rotation wants to be zero, so we'll leave that alone. In the case of spinning target, again, zero, it doesn't matter. In the case of the panel targets, their start x rotation wants to be minus 90. Enter. Then we can test all this and see what I mean. So each of these blueprints, these targets, has moved to have their start x rotation of whatever we set it to. These ones are 90, um, are 0, sorry, and these ones are minus 90. But you'll notice there's a problem. We're able to shoot these targets before they've been revealed, and there's that weird jumpy glitch with the panel ones. Okay. So we need another variable to keep track of, has the target been revealed yet? And if it has, we can shoot it. If it hasn't, we can't. So let's go back to our base blueprint and just add some more capabilities to it. We add another variable, call this has been revealed question mark. And that is going to be a Boolean variable, so a true or false variable. And if we compile, the default value here is false, but we can change that per blueprint. So for the spinning targets, which don't need to be revealed, we can just default it to true. And what do we want to do here? So yeah, to stop us from being able to shoot targets that haven't been revealed yet, we'll add a little bit to this sequence here. So where we go on component hit, the target, was it a first person projectile? And right now we just call do hit no matter what. What we're going to do is drag that has been revealed boolean in, put a branch there, remember B click is branch, and only run do hit if has been revealed is true. That's it, compile, and then go through all three targets and just set the default value. For the round targets, has been revealed defaults to false, that's correct. For the spinning targets, has been revealed defaults to true. And for the target panel ones, has been revealed again defaults to false. So what we should find now is when we play it, we can shoot the spinny targets that have no reveal sequence, whereas these other ones, they know can't be shot yet because they they haven't been revealed, and that's what we're going to do next. So, as we've said, and let's go over this again. For this target to be revealed, it's just a swing in its x axis, its x angle from zero down to ninety, and for these ones. To be revealed is again just a swing in x from minus 90 up to 0. And we've seen a system similar to this before, haven't we? We've done it using timelines. When we get the, the panel targets to fall over and explode, there's a timeline that animates that 90 degree turn, and we can just reuse that. Start with, though, we need another event in the target base. Just like we've got do hit here, it defines some default behavior. We can have a reveal target event, so let's add that. Add custom event reveal target, we can define some default behavior here and then each individual inheriting blueprint can extend that or customize it as it likes, exactly the same as we've done with do hit. So all of them, when reveal target is called, we'll take this reveal has been revealed boolean and we'll set that to be true. Okay, now what are the other ones going to do? Well spinning target's easy because nothing needs to happen round target needs to have that swing down from 0 to 90. So let's go into round targets and delete all the stuff on its event graph that's there already because we haven't done anything. Right click, go for event, reveal target. 
If event reveal target doesn't show up, you may not have pressed compile in your base blueprint after you created it. Right, so what does event reveal target want to do here? Well, it wants to call the base version of the same event first, so we get this to happen. And you could say, is the much point, like, because this is so simple, why not just paste that this into every single one of the inheriting blueprints? And yeah, but you never know, later on we could make this more complicated, like play sound effects for revealing the target, have some particles go off, whatever. Uh, for now, we right click here in the round target, call parent function, so that runs the base version of event reveal target and then continues with whatever we put here. What we want here is a timeline which moves from 0 to 90. So what we can do is go to the target panel, just select its timeline, go control Z, uh, control C, sorry, to copy, go to round target, control V to paste, and wire that up like this, and just change what the timeline is doing. We double click the timeline and say instead of going from, what was it, 0 to minus 90, we just change this second key to be, you know, positive 90, and then that will give that 0 to 90 swing for the target revealing itself. And we can just copy the rest of this stuff, can't we? So I'll go back to target panel and copy the axle rotation, uh, get and set, control C, round target, control V to paste in, and now we have, once we've wired that up, the, the timeline that will re reveal those round targets to pop down. Now for the panel target, the, other, the only other one we need to do, it's kind of already done for us, we just need to rework this timeline a bit. Right now, if you remember, this timeline goes from 0 degrees to minus 90 degrees, causing the panel to fall over. If we change the timeline so that it goes the other way around, so it goes from minus 90 to 0 when we play it to reveal the target, and then the opposite direction to fall the target over, that will give us the behaviour we want. So what we'll do, press Alt-click to break this wire, right-click to add the event reveal target. So you see the usefulness is, because we added reveal target to our base blueprint, we now have it in all of the inheriting ones. We'll change things around so that event reveal target is here. We have a call to the parent function again, just like in the round target. And then we play the timeline. Then when we want to hit the target, we just reverse the timeline. And all we need to do now is switch the timeline over. So instead of going from 0 to minus 90, it goes from minus 90 to 0. So we double click it. Select that first key, change its value from 0 to minus 90. Select that second key and change its value from minus 90 to 0. So it's basically just backwards to what it was doing. Then back in the event graph, you may see there's a problem. We'll call reveal target, run the base version, the timeline will play. As soon as the timeline finishes, we call the do hit and you know, explosion particles, all that. We only want to do this now, blow up the target basically, if the timeline is finished playing backwards. And the way we can do that is just by checking this direction output, which reports what direction did the timeline just finish playing. So we alt click to break this wire, add in a branch with B click, and the condition we're checking is, did the timeline just finish playing backwards? To do that, you drag away from this direction pin, press two equals signs for comparison, and it's the equals enum that you want. And then just change this to say backwards, wire that into our branch, and you've now got a branch which is checking, true or false, did the timeline just finish playing backwards? When we do that. So, unless we've missed anything, that should work. Oh yeah, we need to actually call the reveal target functions, don't we? So we, we've added these re event reveal targets, but we're not actually calling them from anywhere, so they'll never run. Now in the next part of the, the series, we're going to define a little invisible area, like a box that the player walks into, and then all the targets pop up. For now, we'll have them reveal when we press the one key on the keyboard, just to check that we've got this right. And we'll do that in the level blueprint. The level blueprint, if you don't know, is like a blueprint that's built into the map itself, it's not part of any individual actor. You access it from the blueprints menu by selecting open level blueprint. In here, so we need, when we press the number one key on the keyboard, call reveal target on all of our targets. First of all we want the number one key, 
And one thing you might find confusing, by default this blueprint may not respond to any input from the keyboard. We need to go into this class defaults panel here and just say auto receive input from player zero and then it will work. Right, so what do we want to do when press one? First of all, we want to do a we want to get hold of all of our targets. So do a get is it get all actors of class? Yep, there it is. Get all actors of class, which class, and this will be our target base. Hang on, target base. If we're saying go and grab all the target bases in the level, surely it will return nothing. That there are no target bases in the level. There's target rounds, target spinning, and target panels, but no target base. And this is the thing. Whichever class you put in here, it will get every single actor of that class and every actor that inherits from that class as well. So this will return to us in one nice list all of our round targets, all of our panel targets, and all of our spinning targets. And if we add more target types in future, it will just return those as well. Based on those, we will do a for each. So we want to do something to each of these targets that it has found. What we want to do is call that reveal target event. And this is another really important thing about inheritance. Because we defined the reveal target event inside target base here, when we grab hold of everything that is a target base or inheriting from it, we're allowed to call that function. It knows what we mean by that. But it will run the version of this event that exists in the individual targets where we've customized it. And then in ones where we haven't customized it, it will just use the base version. Okay, so unless I've missed anything, this should work. We play the game, can't see the targets, press 1, targets pop up, and then we can shoot them. Perfect, so that's our target revealing mechanisms basically implemented. Let's test that again. Targets aren't there. These ones are. The ones that haven't been revealed we can't hit yet. Then when I press 1, they reveal, and then we're free to shoot them. So in the next part, we will get onto this idea of maybe breaking the target range up into multiple rooms, where the player has to shoot all the targets in one room before the door opens to the next one, and the targets will pop up automatically when the player enters a certain area. Um, see you next time.